Mystic Bell is a story of a young witch at a school for witches. One night she's bumped into by a mysterious figure, and she's then blamed by the teachers for ruining some ancient ritual called the, uh, uh, Walpurgis Snacked Brew. Anyway, she's then told to gather three main ingredients to recreate the brew, otherwise she gets expelled. I love the enemy variety here, in fact it was kind of ridiculous. There are plenty of enemies that only appear once, or at least in only one room. So all this time and effort designing these things, and they only crop up for a couple of seconds. You know, they must have had fun thinking up all these different creatures. You have classics like Skeletons and Frankenstein's Monster, but then you also have things like giant guinea pigs that shoot lasers, a dancing Russian bear, although I'm pretty sure there's charities against this sort of thing. There's even the creature from the cult classic Mystics in Bali, which I never thought I'd see in a game. It may be based upon an ancient Indonesian legend, but still, a floating severed head with the inside still attached. That's pretty unique. I even like all the different quirky teachers and pupils that you come across. One teacher actually provides the boss fight as a werewolf, which means he probably shouldn't be around kids. The school provides a perfect metroidvania setting, with gothic dungeons, staircases, libraries and the nearby village. You know how in every metroidvania game you get new moves to access new areas? Well, the new moves here could do with a bit more imagination. For example, if I told you at the start you only have a single jump, can you guess what one of the upgrades is going to be? Yeah, double jump. The map is quite easy to get around, the only problem is you get this move to turn you into a mouse, and sometimes the mouse holes that you travel in can be quite easy to miss. The controls are sort of sluggish at the start, but they just take some getting used to. It kind of reminds me of old Game Boy Color days. I recommend jumping straight into the hard mode, because easy mode is kind of ridiculously easy. I mean, look at that, you can just stand there and take hits and it doesn't exactly do much damage. And yeah, I guess I am max level here, but still. Speaking of levels, I really like that everything you kill earns you XP that levels you up and increases your health and enhances your magic wand. It means that even if you're lost going around in circles killing the same things over and over again, at least you're earning something and not completely wasting your time. It's just a shame that I maxed out my level pretty early on, and that's probably because I got stuck way more than I wanted to. Not on the combat, but on something else. The puzzles. Now, here we're talking old school adventure style puzzles, where you pick up a whole assortment of knickknacks and then have to try them in all sorts of different locations to work out what the game wants you to do. It started off pretty easy, and then it got cryptic. And here's where it gets tricky. A lot of the items are simply junk. They do nothing, they're just there to confuse you. Thankfully there is a bin, so if you try an item on the bin and it works, then you know the item's junk, which is a little helpful. Also, you can only carry a certain number of things at once, with a magical chest that you can store excess in, giving a very Resident Evil feel to things. Just be sure to always keep your hall pass on you, because if you don't, the Grim Reaper will be out for your blood. But say you don't know what to do, and you take your, I don't know, seven items and try them all on one spot. Well, if nothing works and it's back to the chest, switch everything around, get a different seven items, then go back to the spot and then try them all again, which is very time consuming. I challenge anyone to complete this game without getting stuck at least once. It even pulls some pretty cheap tricks, like at one point there's a bucket and a mop, and you use the mop for a puzzle, but the bucket does nothing. Until all of a sudden, much later, you can then pick up the bucket. I think she says something like, in for a penny, in for a pound, or some shit like that. But if you've already tried the bucket before, and it did nothing, then why the hell would you try it again? This means that, what, now every item may do something different. That's a pretty cheap way of padding things out. It just makes you have to do some pointless backtracking. But overall, I did like the puzzles. It's an interesting twist combining the exploration of a Metroidvania game with the item hunting of an adventure game. It works surprisingly well. One minute you're figuring things out, and the next you're fighting. It's a good mix. Mystic Bell's got a nice charm to it. It's got a sense of humour with all the kids saying stuff like dude and awesome. It may be a small thing, but the way the kids spoke felt natural, making you even crack a smile every now and then. I like that your rival is called the Science Ninja, a character who believes that science is stronger than magic, which I think is a pretty clever, cool idea and shows a bit of creativity. I went in expecting just another baby's first Metroidvania game, but it turned out to be much better than that. Right, I think I mentioned Resident Evil once in this review, so that's put me in the mood for another Resident Evil game, which will make it my, what, ninth, tenth this year? I don't know, I lost count. Thanks for watching!